<laughs> what is up, you guys? Adam Kors, welcome back to the LBC quarterfinal versus Miami Dolphins and Calais. Now, before going in, I do need to cover a thing that um, made this game a bit more difficult than it should have been. Uh, and it's probably one of the silliest things ever, but it is a massive flaw. Um, this is a picture I used when I was prepping for the team. There is one thing lacking here, and that is there are 10 Pokemon showcased, not 11. That means that Yuxi on my side, which wasn't considered for the matchup, um, is not in this picture. And my opponent's Toxapex, which I absolutely didn't prep for, is not in this page either. What this means is that had I knew that my team would have been much more, more defensively routed and probably a bit more thought out than it was, um, it is an oversight from my side that it may or may not have mattered behind or in the grand scheme of things, but this was something I needed to fend off against head on because, of course, I'm going to be forced to fend off against the toxic picks, and I did not think about it at the time. And it's like I said, it's a flaw, absolutely, but it's a mistake on my side and it made the game itself much tougher. So with that said, I'm going to showcase the matchup and the individual six Pokemon I brought and why. So right, the matchup. I really couldn't say much more than there were a lot of Pokemon here I was expecting. One Pokemon that didn't bring it that was absolutely was thinking it was going to make it was Registeel and potentially Lictavar to, to check my Coco. Besides that, this looks the part. Um, Mammoth Swarm was something I definitely was fearing. I was fearing more towards a scarfed Mammoth Swarm for this matchup, but the Salt Vest made a ton of sense and suddenly really very scrafty. Very tough for me to deal with. There are two Pokemon on my team that deals with it properly, but it's a Pokemon that absolutely needs respect. Um, Lodios, the Mega Variant. If it gets to attack freely, it's dangerous. If I have the right Pokemon left, it shouldn't be an issue. But that's one of those cases where it depends on when you bring it and to why. Uh, Toxapex, not the biggest deal. I do believe Jellicent do check it quite well. Um, and of course Garchomp and Tabu Koko do fend it off properly. But it's a Pokemon to absolute respect as it's a Pokemon that can come in and out, soak damage and can carry a potential item that could wheel me out. Um, Clefable, nothing to it. It's either Magic Guard or Unaware. Either, either way, I should be able to deal with it properly. Um, I expect it to be Leftovers or Kissib Berry, both of them make sense, Kissib mainly for Scissor. Um, and this Sidui, I was potentially feeling that this Sidui could have been an option, even though I have Halucha. I feel he thought that it made for a decent check towards Coco, and it to an extent does, since of course I'm forcing myself to have potentially hidden power eyes, which I don't. Uh, my team is as follows, it should be noted before going in, I had 9 Pokemon in this matchup, and I changed my team probably one time too many. And this is the ending team I came up with, which was best of both worlds. And um, yeah, going into the game, I kind of I was, was excited about this uh, idea I had. Uh, so we have Serena for the first time for the season, uh, Scarf variant, able to outspeed uh, Latios. Uh, and of course, since it has two really strong, or three really strong pros, you an extreme speed in and Tej, I shot in Mamus Wine, and uh, um, what's that? Like in, I like her Dusk. Uh, with uh, Acelerog, I thought it was a cool idea to make sense or to try out. Uh, so I'm, I'm Queen of Medici, of course. Uh, Guard Jump, Ground UMC, Adamant, nothing to it. Has Substitute, just to set up sub against. Uh, well, none of these Pokemon are prep for, but Registeel was one of those options, and Entei was the other. So, jokes on me. None of these Pokemon are easy to set up Substitute against. Tapu Koko, Roost variant with U turn, Thunderbolt, and Dazzling Gleam. Um, yeah. Easy, easy switching. General does really well versus most of his team. I was considered Sugar Berry with Grass Nod. Still regretting not bringing that. I, I thought that was a really cool idea that might have worked. Uh, but, well, this Coco works really well too if it gets to attack freely. And of course, Roost is huge. U turn, getting private option, huge. Jellicent, Taunt variant, Stallbreaker set, able to actually deal with it very well with Cliff Able. And also Toxapex, it actually, even though I didn't prep for it, this is a natural response, it will work quite well. Mega Houndoom, mainly here for Latios, but it does have one of those elite speeders that should be able to do quite right. And then a special defensive Scissor with Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Soul Stance, and Roost. Was considered Defog over Soul Stance, but felt that Hazards wasn't the biggest deal. That would also, in hindsight of me not necessarily knowing, 
that you had toxic pegs. So just gonna have that set. I probably would have considered it with that in mind. Though, also option, the other three Pokemon that didn't make it, just gonna have them mentioned. First and foremost, probably the Pokemon I was excited most about using and really rather not bringing was the Nihilego, Scarf variant, able to outspeed Scarf Mamoswine. Um, its offensive progress was really good for this matchup. Uh, I optimized for actually bringing um, Zarina instead. The other one was Miltank, was optimized for Coco. Miltank was a natural check towards Mamoswine. And uh, the reason it wasn't brought is because it was set up for for both. Of course, Scrafty, but also Lodios. I felt that those two Pokemon that was in theory rather scary for me to deal with naturally. So those two were the top of my mind. Those were absolutely one was leveling one a little bit about to be honest. But besides that, um, the last Pokemon was Pillow Swan, which in theory actually deals well with uh, both Lodios. Uh, Toxapex, clearly, <laughs> and also his own Mammoth Swan, it's fatter and resists the same type of moveset. But yeah, with all this said, um, I had a grand idea, I'm, I named my Serena, <laughs> my, this is my lead cull, so I'm going to lead off with that because I thought it was a fun idea. Um, look at that matchup, Coco would have made probably the most sense, but consider that his Mammoth Swan is absolutely scarfed, it didn't necessarily matter at all. So really, with all this said, let's go into the game. So yeah, as stated, from the get-go here, I'm going to lead off with, of course, my Zarina, and my opponent's going to lead off with Mamoswine, which makes a ton of sense, considering the matchup. Um, so I'm actually going to go for a low kick here. I was really hoping that he would go for you know an Ice Crash and whatnot, because I can survive anything here. He absolutely can't take a low kick. He goes for a safer route, however. He goes to Toxapex, and it's going to be a Rocky Helmet variant of Toxapex. And, well, I'll be honest. From here on out, I just feel like, dear God, this is not going to be my funniest game ever. And I really can't bring in Koku to force it out because, uh, well, Mammoth Swine is such a natural switching back on. It goes Stuck Spike. I like the Defog, of course. I also lack a stationary poison. Neho Lego would have been great here. I do taunt it. Um, a poten <clears throat> potential feeling is going to go for a knockoff, but he goes for another layer of Stuck Spike, which would be quite right. Uh, so it goes to the Sidui, and I do believe I go for Will Wisp. And I was thinking I was in a safe zone here. I was feeling that the only reason we would bring it was because it was physical, potentially. I was trying to hit with Spirit Shackle. Uh, but it's actually a special variant of the Sidui. And yeah, it's never in the nightmare. It is not his. I don't know what that Simu is called, the Sidui exclusive Simu. And nonetheless, I am calm, and even if he's modest, uh, this will not knock me out. However, um, I will not be able to take a secondary variant of uh, Shadow Ball that's going to be following. So, while I do go myself for Shadow Ball, um, at this point, yeah, I can't recover, I can't risk anything from here, and I need to switch, up, switch out, so I'm going to get poisoned next time I come in. So I bring in Fulgore, and uh, luckily for me, he goes for Giga Drain, not Shadow Ball, and I was hoping he was trying to go for Hidden Power Fire here, try to knock me out, so I bring in my Houndoom to... Um, potentially get my flash fire going because even though fire blast will get boosted and have resisted pokemon um i can get something out of that but no he goes to the toxic picks and this is absolutely not ideal skull will do a fair chunk of damage and just overall it's not a good time and um i'm actually gonna switch i got the elicent hoping it goes for skull there as i get some lead way to my recovery uh but he's smarter than that he goes to clefable Potentially fair in my Dark Pulse, so... Or, oh no, he went to Scrafty. That's even worse or better depending on how you want to view it. Um, consider the way he brought it in, I'm pretty sure this is an Assault Fist variant. Uh, but yeah, I can't recover it, he could very well outspeed me. So I have one more switching in me, basically. So I'm bringing in Sarina, for the potential knockoff to get my... Um, oh, sorry. Uh, to get my Choice Scarf out of the way, but no, it goes to the CGI. Uh, it's quite alright. I'm actually gonna, since I'm an Scarf, I'm gonna directly go for a U-turn and just really, really, really trying to get a lead way. But he switches out, he goes to Pink Matter, the Fable, and all I was thinking, all right, at least now I can recover with my Jellicent. Um, the, however, this part is gonna be kind of stolly, and it's for the, all the wrong reasons. I just really can't get my footing, and um, Carl has me, well, quite on the back foot, actually. I do recover here, and the Moonblast will absolutely not do 
a significant amount of damage at all. And um, I think it does roughly around 40 uh, with poison, uh, 60 at best. But he gets a special attack drop, which is awful. And um, that's a trend that's going to continue. Now, I actually and unfortunately never do attack this Clefable. And it's something I really are regretting. Uh, mainly because had I attacked him, I would have seen that my, my attack didn't fail. Had I will with him, I would have seen that he wasn't magic guard and was unaware. The reason I say this is because this is a matchup I actually do win if I decide to stay in because of Taunt and Recover and Shadow Ball. But I don't do that to get another lowering on me and I basically start the feeling I need to switch out because I can't hurt this Lefable at all I'm going to eventually lose. Not fully knowing that this was an unaware variant and not only that, I'm switching to Fulgore, predicting the Moonblast, he goes with Flamethrower and predicted me really good here, gets the Flamethrower going. My Akaberry pops, absolutely, but he gets me burned. And um, that basically means that even though I'm pretty convinced as Kessie Berry, I'm sacking Scissor here. It's it's theoretically useless because of that, and he got me, he got me good. Um, and yeah, basically, from here on, I was just not feeling it anymore. Like, I, I had the wrong team for the matchup, he got predictions right, I had no lead way, had no way of dealing with any kind of hazards. I just felt that this was... Um, tough endeavor basically it, what i needed and wanted was to get his mammoth swine in and lock himself with a move that can make my guard chunk work better so i go for dazzling gleam here hoping he switches mammoth swine he doesn't do that goes to move last um and it does a fair chunk it does unfortunately over half so ruse won't matter um but uh, i get the special attack drop but at this point i just go for thunderbolt hoping he's unaware he is absolutely unaware and that gets knocked out that's shit. um I was really like kicking myself over this um, <laughs> because it gets so much residual damage. So he goes to his full Leroy. Uh, I go to Zarina, thinking he's gonna go for an eye shot. Uh, it just basically, I wanted to get the Queen Manager thing being a being a thing, of course. But it goes for Earthquake, uh, and I stated I'm convinced that it's scarfed uh, from the get go, really. So, but the, the other part is that I don't have a safe switch on my own, and uh, I need to sack something. And Zarina is the one making the most sense out of that. Um, so yeah, Serena's gone. That's great. That was like <laughs> I had nothing for it. The only positive part here is I get the guard jump in, hope I can force him out, get a, get behind a substitute, and uh, then try to sweep my way through there. Uh, also see that I can gen the HP wrong. That's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, go for substitute. He goes Toxic Pex. I was feeling right. There is no way, there is no way, this Toxic Pex can break my sub. I'm somewhat bulky. Uh, I have a, some investment in my attack. Quite frankly, I need a Soul Stance to knock out the majority of his team, if not in every everything on his team. So I go to Soul Stance, and uh, he's gonna go for a Scald. And uh, dear God, it's an offensive. It's an offensive pick. Uh, he's gonna break my <laughs> my freaking substitute. And I was thinking maybe, just maybe this was a roll, right? So I go for another substitute, thinking at least, at least. Let, give me some hope here. I do realize the two rounds of Toxic do take me out here afterwards. A kind of dumb idea, but quite frankly, I was so stunned here that I just I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to it. Now, th this in, in theory didn't necessarily matter at all. Um, I do go for the Ground UMC, just knock out picks anyway. Uh, I guess you should be happy he stayed in to enjoy this massive hit on him. But quite frankly, let's say now that I kept my sub. He said later here that he had actually Icicle Spay on his Mammoth Swine, so... He, not only was his scarf, but Ice Cold Spare would definitely knock me out after the cell was broken, which it's alright. It looks more worse than it is. And uh, yeah, poison takes me out. Like, I'm, from this point, I have no way of winning the matchup at all. Um, now I go to Renatus, and uh, he goes to his greatness. Um, and unfortunately, I should say, I am forced to attack here. I could roost it. But consider, and I really mean consider this, Mammoth Swine is Scarfed, I have a Houndoom left, I have Tapu Coco left, and Jellicent. None of them at this part will be able to take an Earthquake, and even if, let's say, Jellicent survive um, an Earthquake, there is no way that none of my other Pokemon could have get something out of that. So, I am in a position where I absolutely will lose, and uh, all I really can say is here, first and foremost, I am not happy with the team I brought. I definitely felt that there was out of focus, I had so many good Pokemon to match up that I don't believe I got, you know, that these are the final six that makes the most sense. I do 
feel my first draft and roughly my draft of what I was thinking about was the one making most sense, but then I <laughs> remade it, and I remade it a third time going into this game. Uh, so they actually might have not played that well with one another, even though they're individually really good sets, there are for a matchup that they didn't consider Toxapex. I'm just gonna have that said, nothing of this will take away anything from Kyle himself, because quite frankly, I think Kyle's sets here are awesome, and it throw me off guard quite well, and um, I definitely believe the better player wins here. There are good preps on his side, and um, I mean Toxapex to offensive variant as a whole. Dear God, what a what a massive idea, and um, he most certainly deserved to win this game because I I couldn't keep up. I simply couldn't, and I think the right battle wins here. I could have bring a broader, a better team. I had a better team at first, but even so, it would probably just be on par, and I don't know whether or not it would have been decisive or not. So yeah, my season is absolutely over here, and um, what a way to go out. Like, I had such a good season. Um, I only lost really one game, and that was versus uh, Jolt, and I think I played that game quite right. But this is one of the, probably the first time in this whole season where I had a matchup that didn't make sense for me, and I really, really are still kicking myself over it. This is just like 24 hours afterwards, but quite frankly, it just... I was building this team over and over again, I just didn't feel right. And I think the game showcased it, I just, it isn't as focused as I wanted to, it isn't as precise as I wanted it to be, and consider Toxapex, had I built differently? Absolutely. It is whether or not it would have been decisive, and that's that's debatable at best. Um, the only thing like I'm looking back on that I kind of regret it is that state of the area, Nihil Lego and Miltank would have been great. Um, they wouldn't stop Lottie, however, but um, Neho Lego would have been a much stronger switch into Clefable. Uh, so much so, considering he was dual or Moonblast and Flamethrower, um, he would not care about Clefable. I really regretted that. And the other one being that, of course, due to this, uh, Sister would have been a main, much stronger switch in towards Latios, which very well would have been a part of fire, no doubt. Uh, but just, it is one of those things that just pants on, like, I. I had ideas, and the first draft I had was definitely on par with what I was fending off against. But then, over time, I overcomplicated things, and I brought a team that actually didn't play too well with one another and lacked proper switching towards the likes of Mamoswine, which broke up with my team by default due to it being scarfed, kind of redeem or made uh, Serena uh, redundant as a matchup as a whole. So, yeah, as stated, I was really, really kicking myself at this game. Um, not, like I said, because of Carl himself, if anything. Um, Carl played this game really well, and uh, I feel I should have been able to parry him better. I should have brought him a better game. Consider how I played it throughout the season. I felt that this was absolutely my weakest game, and uh, I feel a bit ashamed, actually, by it. I really do. Uh, this is not my way of going down. Uh, I'm the one who should keep offensive momentum and build up. i got none of that, and it has a lot to do with um, the way Cal was bring, playing this game, but also just said I didn't have the smarter team that I should have brought. I really ah, it pains me. <laughs> it really does. Uh, but for what it's worth, Cal, GD man, was really fun battling you. Always wanted to battle you. So if anything, I think that that was great. I was I'm really happy about that. And I really hope I can provide a better game some other time in another league, potentially. Who knows. <laughs> And I really want to thank everybody at LBC. I had a great run, very cool um, for a last really like Wi-Fi lead to showcase what I'm all about. And I had a great time facing up against Jolt was definitely the highlight. Uh, but going up against the others has been awesome too. As uh, I feel, how do you say it? I've been avoiding like the competitive part of the league so long, and now get a chance to be a part of that was. It made me feel better. It made me feel that I, I you know, I, I, was, I still got it to an extent. That <laughs> and people I battled actually avoided me to an extent just because they didn't want to showcase in case I was advancing. So I had some kind of, of people were looking up to me, and I never had that feeling. And I, I, it felt great. I'm very happy about that. Uh, so with that said, I really just want to thank you guys say that here, everybody at LBC for making me join here. Thank you for everybody who's watching. Of course, you guys are awesome as always. Of course you are, beautiful bastards. And yeah, take care for fuck's sake. <laughs> Not really. Take care, guys. And watch, of course, Kyle's side. 
I think he has more to offer than I do, besides the salt I'm feeling over myself. <laughs> Potentially, who knows? Anyway, guys, take care. Bye.